2016, the leaders and heroes of the Republican Party were the Bush and Cheney families. And so, so, is it weird yeah. for you to see Liz Cheney, that'd be Dick Cheney's repulsive little daughter, running against you with Kamala Harris? Well, I think it hurts Kamala a lot, actually. Look, she's a deranged person. The reason she doesn't like me is that she wanted to stay in Iraq. She wanted to stay. She wants to, you know, tough, tough person. You know, people get killed all over. She's real tough, right? They're not the tough people. Don't forget, I went against her, and in her state, which is a great, beautiful state, she lost for Congress with the highest number in history. There has never been a congressperson that lost by almost 40 points. And the reason is because if they were ever in that situation, they'd quit. And she lost. She was beaten by a tremendous person, actually, tremendous, that I backed fully. But the reason she couldn't stand me is that she always wanted to go to war with people. I don't want to go to war. She wanted to go. She wanted to stay in Syria. I took them out. She wanted to stay in Iraq. I took them out. I mean, if it were up to her, we'd, we'd be in 50 different countries. And you know, number one, it's very dangerous. Number two, a lot of people get killed. And number three, I mean, it's very, very expensive. That's why we owe $36 trillion. We go, you know, it used to be you go to war to the victor, belong the spoils, right? In other words, if you beat a country, you own that country, you take the oil, you... We go to war. We bomb the crap out of it, and then we leave. You know, it's almost like, what are we doing? What, what's going on? We, we bombed the whole Middle East, and then we left. What did we get? We got nothing. We destroyed. I mean, we bombed the hell out of everything. You know, when they went into, when they took out Iraq for a thousand years with different names, you had Iran and Iraq, similar powers. They were the two big ones. And for a thousand years, they would fight each other this way, this way, this way, then they'd rest. This way, this then they'd rest. They were the, a self-check. Then one day, we go in and bomb the hell out of one. We destroy one. And then all of a sudden, Iran has the whole Middle East to itself. And by the way, right now, Iran has Iraq. Iraq is like a subsidiary of Iran, all right? We did so many bad moves. And her father was, was it. You know, her father was... I was very critical of her father for years. I'd never met him, but I'd say anybody that went into the Middle East I thought was stupid. And he, they say, convinced Bush. Bush, oh, he was just, he was another beauty. But he supposedly convinced Bush to go in him, Bolton, and some other lightweights, convinced them to go in. Let's go into the Middle East and destroy the whole place and kill millions of people. So they went in. But I was never a fan of Cheney. I was always very critical. And when I announced that I was very critical, actually, not personally, but I said, he made a horrible mistake. What are these people doing? They're spending, we spent nine trillion, trillion with a T, not even with a B. Normally I say not million, billion, but now I say not billion, trillion. We spent nine trillion dollars bombing the hell out of the Middle East. And what the hell did we get other than lots of dead people, all, including our people? We got nothing. So I was very critical of him. And then I announced I was running, and I was shocked that he was one of the first people. He endorsed me immediately. I said, that's amazing. But he had something that was very interesting. He had Scooter Liberty. I mean, these are little stories that are interesting. Scooter Liberty was a man that could have done great destruction to Bush. And they left him behind. He was given to the prosecutors. They prosecuted him rather violently. And he was almost like a sacrificial lamb. And as somebody that knows a lot about what's happening, I said, you know, if I were ever president, I'd do something with that guy. That guy got treated very badly, Scooter Libby. And when I became president, I actually called Dick Cheney. I said, let me ask you about Scooter Libby. He was best friends. He, he was begging Bush to give Scooter Libby a pardon. But Bush didn't have the courage to do it. You know, it takes courage to give a pardon. 
He, it does take a certain courage because the press comes after, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And he didn't have the courage to give me. He should have given him a pardon, but he didn't have the guts to do it. But Scooter, and, and what happened is Dick Cheney, for years, for a long time, hated Bush. And don't let anyone tell you, he hated. He said, you don't leave your wounded behind. And I understand that. And Scooter Libby really saved Bush, because he could have said things that would have been very dangerous for Bush in terms of, in terms of getting impeached, in terms of going to jail, in terms of bad things happening. But Scooter Libby didn't do that. And in all fairness to Cheney, I give him credit for this. He was very loyal to him, but he couldn't get Bush to do what he should have done. I came into government, and I did what they should have done. They didn't have the guts to do it. I did it. And Scooter Libby was pardoned. I gave him a pardon. And I never met Scooter Libby, by the way. I never talked to him before that. And I got a call from Scooter Libby after I did that. And he broke down in tears, thanking me so, so much. And then Cheney called me, and he said, that was so incredible what you did for Scooter Libby, because he was really on Scooter Libby's. Scooter Libby took a lot of heat and took all of it and didn't say anything bad about Bush or Cheney or anything else. Could have done it, I know, because you have, you know, you have guys that do that, and you have guys that lie, which is worse, right? But you have guys that do that. But he was very loyal to them, and he suffered greatly. I released him. Cheney called me. He said, it's one of the nicest things I've ever seen done in politics. I said, look, I've heard for years he was treated unfairly. I've heard for years that Bush should have given him a pardon. All I did is do something that somebody else should have done. And Cheney was so th — he said, I really want to thank you. He said, now I'm so glad that I actually endorsed you. It's amazing, but that you would do this. And I didn't speak to him about it. But then, you know, go a couple of years forward or go now. And I don't blame him for sticking with his daughter, but his daughter is a very dumb individual, very dumb. <laughs> She's a radical war hawk. Let's put her with a rifle standing there with nine barrels shooting at her, okay? Let's see how she feels about it. You know, when the guns are trained on her face. You know, they're all war hawks when they're sitting in Washington in a nice building saying, oh, gee, Will, let's uh, send, uh, send 10,000 troops right into the mouth of the enemy. But she's a stupid person. And I used to have, I'd, I'd have meetings with a lot of people, and she always wanted to go to war with people. So, whether it's her, whether it's Dick. I was surprised a little bit with Dick Cheney. I didn't know him at all. I only had essentially the one or two phone calls, and it was only a call saying, thank you very much for doing that for Scooter Libby. That was nice. And Scooter Libby, by the way, was beyond th — he couldn't believe that it, it happened. Nobody would do it. They should have done that for him years before. But I was a 